Meteorologist Zach Fredella here with you on this Thursday evening for HurricaneTrack.com. I'm starting to fill in for Mark Suttup again. Of course, if you follow Mark, he's on his way to Florida at this time. Um, he's deployed himself from the Carolinas on his way to Florida. And the only thing he's reporting right now is a lot of traffic heading outbound, a lot of traffic getting out of Florida, which is certainly great news. That means the people, they understand the threat that they are from Irma, and they're taking action, and they're getting their self and their families out of harm's way and that is really the best advice that officials have been giving you you know it is very difficult to leave your personal property but you know this storm is not one that's going to be oh it's going to miss or oh you know it was all hype and it's not going to play out like that well of course with any storm some areas are going to get a lot more than they bargained for some areas are going to not see as much of an impact from the storm but i can tell you right now Everything tonight is pointing towards a significant weather event, one that we'll be talking about for years to come. And I know we just went through one in Houston about two to three weeks ago. But in my opinion, right now, as a meteorologist looking at everything I can, this could be worse than that. Number one, we're about to hit another major metropolitan city. And no, it's not just going to be from flooding. Really, the rainfall flooding is not so much the concern with the storm. It is going to be the wind impacts and also the surge impacts in some of our most densely populated areas, and that is South Florida, really all the way up through Florida, and then maybe eventually Georgia and the Carolinas may get in on the act as well. Let me show you the latest track. This is from 5 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Central, and you clearly see that the track is not changing. Yes, it's moving a little bit right and a little bit left, but we're not seeing major changes in this track right now, which is not good news. We want the track to move just at least a little bit, maybe get it to the east side of Florida, which that would be the best news for just about everybody if we can get that track to move at least on the eastern side of Florida and the brunt of it missed. Now, that's not good news for our friends in the Carolinas because what does that mean? Well, it stays over water, it doesn't weaken, and then it eventually plows into the Carolinas sometime early next week. But I can tell you right now, everything I'm looking at shows that this could have a direct impact on South Florida. We could see a landfalling tropical system, and when I say a tropical system, I mean a Category 5, Category 4 storm. I mean, it'll be borderline along that, that boundary right there, but let me zoom in for you. And this is basically exactly where it's taking it on shore. And notice the wind speeds. At Sunday, at 2 o'clock in, in the morning on Sunday, 155 here. So it could easily be 160 Category 5. By Sunday afternoon, it is inland and it's weakening to 130. But just northwest of Miami, you have 130 miles per hour major hurricane. You can see how, you know, locations all around the center. And remember, the center is going to be the, the eye of the storm. And that eye wall, where that eye wall goes, that is going to have significant, possibly even catastrophic impacts in some of these locations. But let me show you sort of what the forecast is. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the map off of this. And I'm going to plot actually the, the projected wind speeds of this. And of course, this is only hurricane force winds. This is not showing you that core of the storm, which is going to have that, you know, 130 to 160 miles per hour wind. But you can almost do the estimate. Locations that are in the red, you're talking significant wind impacts. Not so much rain. Remember, you know, with Harvey, it was all about the rainfall. With this storm, it is going to be the wind on top of the rain on top of the surge that is going to come into South Florida. And like I said, there is really nothing right now that makes me believe that this storm is going to miss to the right or miss far enough to the left that you're going to avoid all of this population over in South Florida. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned it before. It doesn't stop there. This thing continues to move north. And it continues to go all the way up the peninsula. Now, the wind speed projections is only going to go out 72 hours here. But it continues to track up through Florida, straight up the peninsula. Again, worst case, because you hit Miami, Fort Lauderdale, this whole area right here is very densely populated. You have Orlando in the middle, and it's just riding all the way up. And then Jacksonville is another major metropolitan area. And then I can't forget about our friends far in the north. Once you get into Georgia and the Carolinas, same story. This storm is still a 90 miles per hour hurricane moving into southern Georgia. That goes to show you how far reaching this storm will be and how intense this storm will be when it makes landfall and really continuing all the way up through the peninsula. Now, could we see a little shift here and there? Yes, it's always possible and we're almost hoping for it to happen. Let me back out for you here so I can show you the whole track again. 
and I'm gonna plot the track back. Yes, we could see a shift in the track, okay? But it's it's kind of what do you want to choose? Okay, if it goes in here, you know, yes, South Florida is gonna take the brunt of the storm and the Carolinas is gonna escape with you know more of a minimal hurricane. If it goes just offshore, then the Carolinas get bigger, more bigger, stronger impacts as we go into early next week when the storm actually makes landfall. So either way you write this with Hurricane Irma. This could be a significant weather event, and you know our friends in Florida, our friends in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, this is one of those storms that you're probably going to be talking about for many years to come. Let me let you look at the satellite, because when you see something like this, I know a lot of people, when, they, when you start hearing, okay, evacuations, it almost takes them to see the storm and to see just the magnitude of this thing. And right now, 175 miles per hour, Category 5 hurricane, been a Category 5 for basically almost two days now. And when you look at that satellite picture, you also notice that we're now getting into the frame of the Florida coastline. The Florida coastline is right here, and it's not too far away. It's moving through the Turks and Caicos this evening and going to be through the Bahamas as we go into Friday and Saturday and Sunday. That is when those significant impacts, Saturday night and the Sunday, most of Sunday, that's when those significant impacts are expected in the Florida vicinity and then eventually Sunday afternoon into Monday it'll be riding up the coast. Here's what I wanted to show you just the latest track models because they're not budging and when they're not budging much left and right that means we're starting to get a consensus of where this thing is going to make landfall and the track models are not too far apart and unfortunately it is that South Florida you know that that the peninsula of Florida just looks to take a direct hit from the storm um, once we go into Sunday and that's why you know, we're hearing all of the information from the officials, heed the advice, and I like to bring it up because it doesn't matter whether you put models on here, a satellite on here, a track from the National Hurricane Center, that doesn't really tell you what the impacts will be from the storm, okay? So what I want to do here is I want to show you the latest information from one of the statements from the National Weather Service. This is the National Weather Service <clears throat> out of Miami in Key West, and these are the potential impacts, okay? Just listen to what they're saying here. Wind. Prepare for life-threatening wind having possible de devastating impacts across South Florida. Potential impacts include structural damage to sturdy buildings, some with complete roof and wall failures, complete destruction of mobile homes, damage greatly accentuated by large airborne projectiles. Locations may be uninhabitable for weeks or months. Numerous large trees snapped or uprooted, many roads impassable from large debris, and widespread power and communication outages. That does not sound like anything any human being wants to go through if they're in South Florida or where the, wherever the storm strikes. That is certainly not something you want to hear. And then the surge, same thing, prepare for life-threatening surge, having devastating impacts across most of the counties in South Florida along the coastline. So I like to put this information out there because this is the information that gets you to say, whoa, this is serious. You know, this is the real deal. This is the real information. You can sit there and look at satellites. You can sit there and look at models. You can sit there and look at any meteorologist on television showing you all of these things. But when you start to hear the words that comes out of the National Weather Service's mouth, when it comes out of the National Hurricane Center's mouth, hopefully that makes you understand the danger that we have as, you know, as living beings with this storm possibly moving into South Florida. But again, the impacts are going to go all the way up through Florida. The only place in Florida that's probably going to escape any major impacts would be the Panhandle. And then we also have to watch the Carolinas, Georgia. Those locations, too, are going to see some impacts, but it is still uncertain where exactly the storm is going to go. If it gets back offshore, the impacts will be greater. If it stays inland in the peninsula of Florida, the impacts will be a little bit less. And of course, I know you're wondering, we have Jose out there. We have Kataya in, in the southern Gulf. Both of those we're really not concerned about right now. Kataya is just going to go into Mexico, and then Jose is going to go out to sea. May not turn, you know, might do a little loop-de-loop -loop out to sea and could try to make its way closer to the United States, but still, that's so far off. We have bigger, you know, problems as far as with Irma. And again, Irma's projected to make landfall on, on South Florida, right near the Miami community, in the Keys, the upper Keys first, then into Miami as we go into Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon and then continuing up through the Carolinas, Georgia and the Carolinas as we go into Monday and the Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Zach Fredella with HurricaneTrack.com. This is your uh, Thursday evening update. And again, Mark will kind of update as we go, and I'll be updating as well as we get more information from the National Hurricane Center. Everybody have a great night.